my name is Eve, I'm a 3D artist and illustrator and today I'll be showing you how to UV unwrap, texture, light and render this character. This is part 2 of my series where I show you how to make this bunny model. In the previous part I showed you how you can make the model and explained some blender basics. So if you haven't seen part 1 make sure to check it out. If you find this video useful make sure to subscribe. Also turn on the notifications so you get notified when I release new tutorials. There's lots of exciting stuff coming up. So before we start UV unwrapping and texturing our model here, we want to apply all the mirror modifiers that we put on our meshes earlier. Press down here on the tick mark next to the modifier and select apply. Then repeat that for every mesh that has the mirror modifier on it. Before we start, it's good practice to apply all transforms to your meshes. As you can see here, we have some values in the translation and we want to get rid of those. Press A to select all the meshes and then go into Object, Apply, All Transforms. Now we don't have any random values. Next we're going to assign a material to our bunny. Press here to go into Material Properties and press New. I'm just naming it bunny underscore material. What a material does is it defines how your 3D object looks. So it defines its color, it defines whether it's dull or shiny, or transparent or opaque. Now if you go back into object mode, you'll see that the material isn't applied to every mesh in your scene. How you do that is by holding down shift and then left click and drag to select all the objects in your scene. Then press Ctrl L and select materials. That links your materials and applies them to all the meshes you just selected. And now I'll just give you a quick explanation of what we're going to do. What we are making is a UV map for our model. A UV map is the flat representation of the surface of the 3D model and it's used to easily apply 2D textures to the 3D object. The process of creating a UV map is called UV unwrapping. In order to unwrap our model here, we need to make UV seams. A seam tells Blender that when we unwrap, the faces on either side of the seam should not stick together in the UV map. So when unwrapping, the mesh is unwrapped at the edges which are marked as seams. To make unwrapping easier to understand, think of it like origami. Essentially, you're just flattening the 3D model down to a 2D representation of it. Good UVs are crucial for texturing later on. Because of that, we will manually create the seams for our UV map instead of using Blender's Smart UV project because that gives less control over where the seams go. Now let's start making our UV seams. Press Tab to go into Edit Mode. Press 2 to go into Edge Selection Mode and then double click to select these edges here. Then holding down Shift, double click here as well to select these edges. Then right click and select Mark Seam. What that will do is once we unwrap this, it will split it into two UV shells around this seam. So it will be separated into a front part and a back part. Now we do the same for the eyebrows and the nose. Select edge loops towards the back of the mesh and then right click make seam. As a general rule, you want to put your seams in places that won't be very visible. In the case of clothing, for example, you can put seams where they would naturally occur, like for example around the shoulders and on the sides. For the hat, you want to select one of the edge loops at the back, as well as the loop on the bottom of the cone. Then just right click and select mark seams. Here I actually forgot to select the loop on the bottom of the cone and some of the edges on the whiskers, but then I add them on later. On the whiskers you want to select the loops at the end of the cylinders, as well as one edge on the back of each cylinder, and then right click and mark seams again. Now for the dress, we're going to select areas where seams would naturally be. Double click and select this edge loop, then shift select this top one, and then holding down shift do the exact same on the other side. We want to split up the dress into separate parts. This is optional but you can also select the edge loops at the end of the sleeve as well. Then you also want to select the bottom loop here and deselect these two edges by holding down control. That way when you unwrap, that UV shell won't be split into two parts and instead will be one whole piece. Then do the same for these sleeve edges. Last but not least, we also want to separate the sleeves off the dress. Double click here on the shoulder edge loop. Then with all of those selected, right click and mark seams. Here I'm just double checking the sleeve seams by turning off the subdivision surface modifier to be able to see more clearly. 
As you can see, all the edges around the shoulder haven't been marked as a seam, so now I'm selecting the remaining edges and marking those as well. After that, I increase the subdivision surface modifier levels again. Next is the body. I also want to split that into two parts, front and back. You could also split the arms and legs off into their own UV shells, but for the purpose of this tutorial we'll keep it simple. Select the edge loops running through the middle of the body. Deselect the bottom of the shoes. We'll separate the bottom into its own UV shell by selecting the edges along the sole of the shoe. Next, select the top edge loop of the boots to separate those out. And last but not least, select these edges between the fingers. Make sure you have everything selected properly so the front and back sides separate from each other properly. Then once again, with everything selected, right click and then select mark seams. With the body done, we now move on to the accessories. For the bag, you want to put a seam around the front and a seam around the bag of the smooth cube. Select the edges there and then right click and mark seam again. You do the same for the cube and the cylinder that make the closing mechanism of the bag. Select these edges and then right click again, mark seams. I do the exact same for the other bag. We won't do any seams for the eyes because the geometry has a hole at the back, which means that it will unwrap properly without any extra work. So now our UV seams are done. With that done, we are almost ready to unwrap. Hold your mouse over the top right corner and pull out another workspace window. Press on the left here and select UV editor. We're going to use this to see how our texture looks. Down here, Pull up the timeline and change the editor type from timeline to shader editor. Now we're going to connect a UV grid texture to our bunny material. The reason we use this checkerboard grid is to check for any stretching in our UVs once we unwrap them. Ideally you want to avoid any stretching and have nice even squares. Ok now let's press shift A to add a texture. Add an image texture. Connect the color of the image texture to the base color of the material. Then press here in the viewport to enable the texture preview. In the image texture node, press new and make it double the size, which is 248 by 248 pixels. And now here from generated type, select UV grid. Press OK to create the UV grid texture. Now all I'm doing is just double checking all my seams before unwrapping. As I mentioned earlier, I had forgotten to select the bottom edge of the hat as well as the back of the whiskers. Here I select the bottom of the cone and mark the edge loop as a seam. I also put seams around the back of the whisker cylinders by selecting one edge each on the back and then marking those as seams. After double checking all your seams, press tab to go into object mode and then press A to select all objects. With all of your objects selected, press tab again and now go into edit mode. Then press A to select all faces. Finally, you press U and select unwrap. Now your model is unwrapped. As you can see here on the right, we now have a flat 2D representation of our 3D model. The UV grid we applied doesn't seem to have any major stretching, which means we've done our UV seams well. If you do have any stretching in your UVs, double check and adjust your seams. This is optional, but I'm just going to scale up the shells that I know will need more resolution by pressing Ctrl L to select the shell and then S to scale. Generally, the areas with more detail can be slightly bigger. After done with the scaling of the UV shells, go to UV Pack Islands. Now we can remove our grid texture and assign a new blank one in order to start making our color map. In the shader editor, delete the UV grid texture and press Shift A to add a new image texture. Connect the color of the image texture to the base color of the material. Then press New and in here make the texture white. 
also make sure that it is 248 by 248 pixels. Then press OK. Here I'm just naming it bunny underscore texture. As you can see in the UV editor on the right, now we have the white texture assigned and we're ready to start texturing. I'm just keeping the UV editor on the right so you can see the texture update as we're painting the model. And then I'm also resetting the shader editor back to timeline and getting it out of the way. Now we're going to duplicate the reference image plane and increase the opacity so we can swatch the colors for the texture from it. Select the reference plane and then press Shift D to duplicate it and X to constrain it to the X axis. Then go into object data properties down here and increase the opacity back to one. Then also make sure that that plane is sent to back instead of front so it's behind your model. And now we're ready to start texturing, which is the fun part. Press tab and go into texture paint mode. Now here on the left, you can see all of your tools and then on the right, you can see all the tool properties. We'll be using the bucket tool and the brush tool today. Let's start with the bucket tool to fill in all the main colors. If you go into color palette here, on the right you can save the colors that you're using for quick access. Press on new to make a new palette. Press here and select the eyedropper tool. Then click on the reference image plane to swatch a color. Press plus to add the color to your color palette. Now you can see here on the right, your 2D texture is updating as we're painting on the 3D model. Let's paint the head now. Go back into object mode and select the head geo. Then press tab and go back into texture paint mode. Swatch the yellow from the body and save it to your palette. That makes painting later on much quicker if you need to go back to the same color. Then I continue to do that for all of my 3D objects until I have all my main colors done. After that, it's time for painting details. Turn the background reference plane back on and then press 1 on the numpad to align to front view. Here we're going to use the brush tool. Select it and then you can decrease the radius from up here. Here on the right in the tool properties you can turn on symmetry to be able to paint on both sides at the same time. In fall off you can also change the hardness of your brush. Use constant for a hard edged brush. Then just select the pink color you've swatched and start painting the cheeks in. You can keep swapping between the pink and the yellow to refine the shape. We'll also paint the rest of the details with the paintbrush. So all the details on the dress, the ears, the accessories will be painted by hand. When painting on the dress, I turn on stabilized stroke on the right here, which smooths my lines. For certain areas, you can turn on symmetry and then turn it off whenever you don't need it anymore. When I painted the sleeves here, I turned on symmetry in both X and Y to be able to mirror the results across both axes. This way you can paint much quicker. Keep in mind that texturing by hand just takes time. Be patient with it and most importantly, have fun! It does take a while and there is constant back and forth but eventually things start taking shape. Here I've sped up the tutorial a lot as otherwise it would be hours long. But I'm not really doing anything special here, I'm just repeating what we did so far and manually painting all the details on the dress, ears, bags and hat. And now, after a while of painting everything in, we're done with texturing. Here on the right you can see your painted texture. Make sure you save it from up here by going to Image Save As. Otherwise you might lose all your progress which is not gonna be fun. <laughs> save it as a PNG file. And now it's finally time for lighting and rendering. Go up here in shading and turn on scene lights. Now you can see your lights in the viewport. At the moment you only have one default point light in your scene. You can see it here in the hierarchy on the right. Let's just move that to the back of the character. Select the light and then press G to move it back. For the moment I'm just turning off the shadow so I can see the light on its own. After you're happy with the positioning, press Shift D to duplicate the light. Position it on the other side in the back. And then increase the power of both the back ones to 3000 watts. After that, duplicate one of the lights again by pressing Shift D and then position it at the front. Decrease the power to around 500 watts. Also, you can increase the radius to 3 to soften it a bit. 
Here, honestly, everything is up to your preference. You don't have to use the exact values I use. You can play around with it and see if you can get some nice results with other positions or light combinations. Now I just want to decrease the shininess on the bunny material. To do that, you go here in material properties and then reduce the specular down to zero. Next up, let's add a backdrop. Press Shift A and add a plane. Press S to scale it and then G and Z to move it in the Z axis. Then press Tab to go into edit mode and press 2 for edge select mode. Select this edge in the back here and then press E to extrude it and Z to constrain it to the Z axis. Now we're going to add a modifier to smooth that back transition. Go into modifier properties and add a bevel modifier. Increase the amount to something like 0.5 and the segments to 10. Then right click and shade smooth. And now we have a nice backdrop. Let's assign a material to it now. Go into material properties and add a new material for the backdrop. Then down in the timeline here, change that out for a shader editor again. What I like to do for my backgrounds is make them one solid color. So I don't want my background to receive any light and have lighter and darker areas. If you do prefer that, feel free to skip this step. Go into the shader editor, press Shift A and search for emission. Add an emission node and delete the principal node. Then connect the emission to the surface in material output. Now choose a background color you like and it's done. Now we have a flat lit background that doesn't react to the lights in the scene. Now let's set up our render settings and then add a new camera after that. First go up here into render properties. We're going to use cycles, so choose it from the drop down menu here. Down here in sampling are your render samples. The higher your samples are, the less noisy and more clear your image will be. You can set them higher if your results are grainy when rendering, but that will also increase your render time. For now, I'll just leave them as they are and adjust later if needed. I also turn on denoising in my renders. If you go all the way down here in color management, you want to make sure that the view transform is set to standard and not filmic. That way, your image will be nice and vibrant. It will look a bit too bright in the viewport, but it's gonna look nice in the final render, I promise. After this, go into Output Properties here and set the resolution to 248 by 248 for a large square image. You could also do 1080 by 920 if you want a standard size image. Now we're just going to open another window with a 3D viewport in it. This way we can set up a camera on one side and then navigate around the bunny on the other side. Now let's set up a camera. Click in the viewport and press Ctrl Alt and then zero on the numpad to set up a camera from view. Then you can select the camera from up here on the right and then go into object data properties. Change the type from perspective to orthographic. Change the value to five, then press N to bring up the item menu. In the item menu with the camera selected, make sure that the X location value is set to zero. That will make it perfectly centered. Here, I'm just moving the backdrop a little bit. After some adjustment and playing around with it, here are all my final settings I used for my lights. You might want to do your own experiments with them, but I figured it would be useful if you wanted to replicate this exact setup. I'm also sharing the position values of each in case you want to replicate that. Also, in viewport shading, I have both scene lights and scene world with a value of 2 turned on. And that is the full setup. You can now press F12 to render your image. When done, make sure to save it from up here. Okay, so that concludes the final part of this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. Make sure to like and subscribe if you found it useful. In the next video, I'll quickly show you how to render a turnaround video of your bunny model. Also, leave me a comment below with what tutorials you would like to see in the future. Okay, bye, until next time!